as chairman of the John Evans Atamils Mills Memorial Heritage for the invitation on behalf of the Board of Directors to unveil and launch the John Evans Atamils Mills Memorial Heritage logo. Appropriately, the heritage seeks to inspire humanity for a better society, a virtue that President Atta Mills lived and died for. Professor John Evans Atta Mills simply was a good man. It therefore gladdens the hearts of many millions of people who loved him that this decision was taken to launch the Atta Mills heritage here on the campus of our alma mater, the University of Ghana. This is because it was right here on this, these very hallowed university grounds, the hill of knowledge and the nation's hope and glory, where we are taught to proceed in integrity and truth, that Professor John Evans Atta Mills honed his distinct values and also laid the foundation for the ultimate mantle of leadership that God placed on him in the latter stages of his life. He earned his enviable reputation on this very campus, even before his call to higher office. Professor Mills left a lasting legacy here on this campus through his teaching, his mentoring, rigorous intellectual endeavor, and fiscal activity through sports. As a matter of course, Prof became an organic part of this university's history. He lived by the ethos of integrity that the university advocates when he eventually entered national politics as vice president and ultimately as president of the Republic of Ghana, these values never deserted him. Unfortunately, this philosopher king and servant leader of a president did not live with us as long as we would have wished. On that dull and hazy overcast day of 24th July 2012, death unexpectedly snatched him from us, leaving a shocked nation in sorrow, anguish, and in tears. And my following reminiscences are the first time I'm talking publicly of this sad event. That fateful day, I had been alerted <clears throat> that I would be asked to act because Prof was likely to travel to Nigeria. I was informed by his secretary, Sir James Beba Kumensa, that he had requested specifically that I stand him in for him at the official launch of the Brand Ghana project, which was to take place at the International Conference Center. I attended that function with the Chief of Staff, Mr. John Martin Newman. Upon our return to the castle, which at that time was still then the seat of government, as I proceeded to my office, I asked Chief of Staff Martin Newman to inform Prof that I was going to cross over and see him to discuss a few important issues after meeting with a former president who was waiting in my office. Moments after our return, the Chief of Staff called me frantically and said that Prof had been rushed to the 37th Military Hospital in an emergency. I wrapped up my meeting with the former president and prepared my staff to rush to the hospital. It was then that Sir James Beba Kumensa entered my office and delivered the devastating news. Prof dead. How? How can Prof die? were the questions I asked. The world came to a standstill. Nothing in my political life and experience had prepared me for a moment like this. The shelter of working under Prof had been a wonderful experience. His death left me in trepidation of stepping up to the plate, realizing the huge responsibility one was stepping into and that the back was going to stop with me and no one else. The swearing in ceremony was a blur and I struggled to complete my acceptance speech without breaking down in front of a sorrowful nation.
when I left the podium, I missed my way back. I went and sat back in my vice presidential seat until the APRO from the MPs reminded me that I had sworn the presidential oath and should move to the ceremonial presidential seat. The rest is history to be narrated at another appropriate time. Professor Mills was my boss, my comrade, my mentor, and my friend. He was tolerant, he was kind, he was fair, but he was firm. I'm proud to have honed my political skills at his feet. I know there are many also who revere Professor Mills as their teacher and their mentor. He taught in this university for over 25 years and contributed to producing many astute legal practitioners from the Faculty of Law, and also contributed in producing many fine business minds from the then School of Administration, which is now the University of Ghana Business School. Our gathering here today to celebrate once again a man who sacrificed his very life from humanity for academia, for his country, and above all, for his God, for Jesus Christ, is proper and befitting. I believe the launch of the Atamil's heritage, which is anchored on his values and principles, and is aimed at inspiring humanity, including the youth of Africa and Ghana, for a better society, will further emphasize his legacy. Already Prof's name is befittingly assigned to a significant number of national infrastructure across the country. These include the John Ivansata Mills High Street in Accra, the FPSO John Ivansata Mills, which extracts oil from the 10 fields, which are both named after him. Similarly, the Community Day Senior High School in his home area, Otium, which happens to have been the first of the e-block initiatives to be completed, which I had the privilege as president to have commissioned and named after him. Here at the University of Ghana, the School of Law's modern building is named after both Professor Ikria Kunyehine and Professor Atta Mills in appreciation of their collaborative effort in the construction of the edifice and their remarkable contribution to the teaching of law in Ghana. While I was serving as Prof's Vice President and as head of his economic management team, President Mills grew Ghana's economy to a level that remains unprecedented borrowing his own words in 2011. That year, Ghana's economy grew by over 14%, the highest in the world, with both non-oil and oil growth contributing equitably to this feat. <laughs> Typical of him, even before this growth would be realized, the gracious professor had earlier paid homage to his predecessors in his first State of the Nation address to Parliament in February 2009. In the chair at the time was the Right Honorable Joyce Bamford Addo, Ghana's first and so far only female Speaker of Parliament, nominated by President Mills in his quest for gender parity. And I quote him here, he said, Madam Speaker, Kwame Nkrumah laid the foundation for oil and gas exploration in Ghana. J. John Rawlings created the institutional framework for its exploration and exploitation. The oil and gas was struck in commercial quantities in the period of John Ajikum Kofo. Actual commercial exploitation is beginning in the period of John Evans Atta Mills. And in between, as mentioned, are others who played a very important part. Prof was the one to share credit and glory. Nanache, this is the man we celebrate today. Magnanimous, gender sensitive, a unifier, peaceful, and above all, God fearing. As a Pan-Africanist, he never hid his distress over historical and contemporary exploitation of Africa, which propelled the growth of Europe and America, leaving Africans in poverty. Therefore, as president, he was determined to use the oil and gas wealth 
for the greater benefit of Ghanaians, for Ghana and all Ghanaians, irrespective of our backgrounds. And this is why he passed the Petroleum Revenue Management Act, the PRMA, through which the ABFA, the Annual Budget Funding Account, the Heritage Fund, the Stabilization Funds were created. These have helped us immensely in managing our oil revenues. And even only recently during the COVID, it was money accumulated under my administration in the Stabilization Fund created by Professor Mills that was used to provide funds for financing government's initial response to the pandemic. As a social democrat who believed in social justice, he laid a robust foundation for the socioeconomic advancement of Ghana. President Mills purposely invested in Ghana's greatest assets, the citizens, particularly its youth. Seeing great potential in Ghana's future through education, he encouraged the study of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, through the Mathematics, Science, and Technology Scholarship Scheme, which was named MASTERS for secondary and tertiary students. He also actively involved eminent scientists in his quest for science education, research and development, and innovation for national development. His partners in this endeavor included Professor Emeritus Francis Nkrumah, son of the founder and first president of our republic, Professor Irama Adi, the first Ghanaian female professor of natural science, and also his friend, Professor Francis Kofi Ampeni Aluti. As President, Professor Mills increased the captation grant introduced by President Ajikum Kofo by 50%. He enhanced the school feeding program and embarked on an ambitious construction of infrastructure in secondary schools across the country. Under his leadership, the University of Health and Allied Sciences, UHAS, in the Volta region, and the University of Energy and Natural Resources, UNER, in the Brongahafu region, were established. In the health sector, President Atamils also equipped our national emergency response system with the importation of 160 new ambulances and initiated numerous health infrastructure projects across the country. These included the 100-bed hospital with a malaria research center at Tishi, the rehabilitation of the Tamale Teaching Hospital and the Adenta Community Hospital and several other polyclinics and health centers. Prof was also very witty. He could provide on the spur of the moment intelligent answers that could make you smile or laugh. As the chairman recalled, and I hope you all recall, the issue of many ways of killing a cat. A judgment in the courts had gone against government. And our chairman at the time, Kwamnaji, was ranting against the judiciary. And the issue about many ways of killing a cat came up. A journalist asked President Atamils at a press conference about it. And his savvy and witty response was, look at me. Come closer. Do I look like a cat hunter? <laughs> He believed in the genuine and true independence of the judiciary and was ready and willing to protect the judiciary and the justice delivery system at all costs. I'm sure you also remember, recollect the Zivu fiasm during the Ivorian crisis. This was also pregnant with humor. But most importantly, it's a statement that requires interdisciplinary research into the origins and nuanced meaning of the rich, fancy proverb, Ziwufiasem. Prof detested comrades undermining each other. He had a practice of detaining the person who had come to make a negative report about a colleague to him. He detained you in his office. He quickly had the colleague about whom the report had been made brought to his office quickly. He then asked the one who had made the report to repeat what he had just told him. And in Ghanaian parlance, we say, come and see Stammery. Another <laughs> chairman, my brothers and sisters, these and many more recollections of this inspirational son of the land are the reasons Prof was and still loves 
by so many. For those familiar with the anthem of this great university where President Atamil studied and worked, you realize the earlier part of my speech drew on our motto, Integri Procedamus, to wit, proceeding in integrity. Integrity sounded loudly and was defined by Prof in all he did. As I conclude, I call on each one of us Ghanaians to uphold truth and integrity and the peaceful nature of Prof. Let us stay united, even in the face of adversity. Let us uphold tolerance. Yes, we must endeavor to proceed in unity and in truth. We must also strive to defend the cause of freedom and we must fervently uphold the public cause to protect our democracy. This is why Lagon, the hallowed ground upon which we stand today, always calls on her products and all Ghanaians to arise and arise and arise to defend the cause of freedom and proceed in truth and integrity to make our nation proud. Refreshingly, these attributes of the investor of Ghana intersect harmoniously with President Mills' personal values, his quest for peace, for which he was named Asunjehene, his quest for excellence and integrity, transparency and accountability, commitment to the well-being of all Ghanaians and inclusivity. I'm glad the heritage seeks to build on from where he left off in a non-partisan manner. Above all these values are what made Professor Mills a true Ghanaian. He embodied that ideal Ghanaians yearn for to collectively transform our country. Let his values lead us. Professor Mills was such a moral and political colossus, and there can be no limits put on the vehicles and instruments that eulogize and ingrain his memory and history in the hearts and minds of Ghanaians. Thank you.